G'day, this is Scotty Tucker, here today, like a drowned rat, showing you guys how to install a Vertex aeration system. Why am I doing this in the rain? Because I love it. There's a great little uh, dam that we've got here to do this in. Got a two uh, air station system, the compressor and a couple of rolls of hose. So let's have a look at, uh, at what's in the box and what's going in today. So the air stations that go into the dam, this is the metal style air station. There's a couple of different styles of Vertex too. But you can see that uh, this base here is metal, quite strong, powder coated, all flat based along the bottom. So it's fine to go into uh, lined uh, dams with, with pond liner and also great for going into the muck because the, the surface area of this is designed so that it will settle in and won't sink down miles in um, really thick sludge. These discs just simply screw on top of there. We'll run that through with you in a minute. So that's the, what goes in the water. Also the hose that we use is a self-weighted PVC hose. So very, very thick and sinks down to the bottom so you don't have anything floating around like spaghetti on top of the dam. Really great hose, that one there, and it's easy to work with. And the compressor itself is somewhat small and compact. This is a little one third horsepower compressor. It's got a sound insulation kit on it. Inside there, it's got sound in insulation foam. That's an option that Vertex has. Very good if, you, if this is close to a, um, uh, to a house. All right, so this is the, the twin disc air station that we're gonna drop in. So these are the discs that go on the bottom, little slits in there, and what happens as the air goes through those slits, um, release the air and it wobbles so you don't get crap caught up on this. So you don't have to pull this out if at all, uh, certainly not very often. I've seen these come out of dams uh, over in the US that have been in there for about eight years, nine years, and while they're not clean like this, they're not covered in gunk either. Um, the action of this wobbling around as well as the air coming out means that not much settles. Uh, also, if you do stick this on a timer, um, these are very low power consumption sy uh, systems, so it's not gonna cost you a fortune to run anyway, but if you still choose to put it on a timer, uh, it is best to at least run it for a few hours a day for that reason that you, you don't get something that settles on there. You can see it just expands and those pores open up and that's how the air comes out. Uh, so it's a very simple system. You simply, uh, you've got a threaded part here and a threaded part here. You don't actually need to use any, uh, any plumber's tape on this. You just connect it straight in and you just wanna make sure that it lines up straight and uh, it's not going on crooked. But as you can see, you just sort of let it feel its own way in through there and then just spin it around and you only need to go hand tight. You don't need to go crazy tight. You certainly don't need any tools. And once that's on, like so, also a good idea just to um, pull this off to make sure that there's no um, blockage on the membrane itself. Then you've got the other one here. Now, before I put that on, you can see there, there's a little barb there. That's where the hose simply connects on. Now with the Vertex, you can just use PVC glue to put it straight on there, uh, or you use hose clamps. We generally use hose clamps just because it's a bit um, uh, a bit more secure, a bit more peace of mind. Um, but if you're really worried about it going in line or off for whatever reason, you don't want any um, metal objects in the, in the pond, then um, PVC glue is fine. And the hose will just come out here. Uh, these here are just so that it will um, help settle in the mud and in the muck or the sludge if there's on the bottom um, and also so you can drop it down and these little holes here what you do with this is that you run rope through there and out the other side which enables you to lower it into the pond that then hits the bottom drops down like that and you're good to go it also is a good uh, option with these types of ones uh, air stations that uh, if you drop it down and for whatever reason you're not happy with the location as to where it dropped, it enables you to lift it back up again and move it and then drop it down again. It also enables you, if you do want to leave a, uh, a rope on it for whatever reason, if you uh, need to move it in the future or you want to pull it up every now and then to, to check it, then it enables you to just simply leave the rope tied onto that and then you can tie it to a buoy on the surface. Uh, if you don't want to see it on the surface, you can use a polypropylene rope which floats and just tie it up into a, a ball, kind of like, like a, a knitting wool type ball um, below water level and you know that it's going to be floating around somewhere below water level if you don't want to see it. But we don't really need to worry about that very much. Um, not many clients do that, but it's there as an option if you, uh, if you choose to do it. 
So then the other one just simply screws onto there as well. Now with the Vertex bottom line hose, Vertex only use a 5 8 inch hose, that's, that's just one size for it. They believe that it's um, best to use the larger diameter. This is a really nice hose to work with, it's very uh, flexible, easy to work with. Um, but one of the uh, useful tips for you is when they package the hose, you can see that the, it's easy to get to at the top. As long as the Vertex logo on the box is facing right way up, you know that every time you pull this out, it's going to coil straight out of the box. Now, it's not critical in a, in a small little installation like this, but um, it's very useful. Uh, actually, even on a small installation like this, we're just going to use a kayak today, and uh, our young bloke Jackson's going to be um, paddling and uh, pulling it out. And it's a hell of a lot easier when you've got two hands on a paddle not to worry so much about feeding hose out as well. You'll still probably paddle and then stop and feed it out, but it just makes life a hell of a lot easier when it, when it spools out of the box very easily. And when you're doing larger installations and you might have six or seven or eight or nine of these boxes in the boat at once, and when you're feeding them out, um, it makes it a lot easier to know that it's just gonna spool out as you're doing it. Um, and with those larger installations, what you would do is um, feed it out, connect the hose, put it on there, and then just keep feeding it out as you go. Then you'll find your location, go a little bit more, and then you'll grab the hose as to um, know where to cut. And you just accept that you're gonna drift back a little bit while you're cutting the hose, but you take your time, cut the hose, put it on the, uh, the barbed fitting on the air station, connect up your hose clamp or your glue, whichever one you're using. And then just before you drop it, you'll paddle back out again to where you were so that you can just drop it over the, over, over the side. Now, what can be easier in a um, small dam like this is when you've got a bait and a long bit of rope, you can pull your mate across in the boat. It's a lot easier to do it this way because you have more control and um, you can get a bit more precise with where you're going to um, drop the air station as well. Advantage with these systems, you can see they come on their own base which is very easy to, um, to install. So you just drop that where the power is going to be. And what we'll do now is just dig a, a little shallow trench just to hide the hose. We're just tren trenching the hose directly into the ground. There's no need to sleeve it in any other sort of PVC. You can if you want to, if you're worried about um, uh, slashing equipment, getting it. But um, uh, as long as it's deep enough that uh, the equipment won't reach it, it should be fine. Um, the hose can be direct buried. Uh, if you are running a remote system, you would have the trench be as long as what it takes to get back to where the compressor is. Uh, generally, it can be up to a couple hundred metres away. And at the water's edge, you would simply have a valve box that you um, dig into the ground. All right, now, so now trying to beat the rain. Uh, one of the good things about these, they just plug into a normal 10 amp power point. So that's easy done. And you've got a weatherproof, um, it's powder coated aluminium, lifetime guarantee rust uh, guarantee, so that's great. Um, if you want to lock it, you can lock it with the key. Uh, if you don't want to lock it, then just leave it. Uh, now you can see when we turn it on, the noise level is quite low because it's got the sound kit on. And the, there's an on off switch at the back here as well, which you can just isolate and just turn that on and off. So if you do lock it up, uh, you can turn it on and off without needing to open it. And so inside here is the, um, uh, the compressor itself with the valve kit. Now what will happen is that with the air stations that are in the water, you will get more air going out of one of them than the other. Uh, and if you've got more like three or four air stations or six air, where many air stations, the air is always gonna try and escape out of the shortest, shallowest one. So what you'll end up doing is needing to adjust the valves a little bit. In this case, just one of the valves to shut one down a little bit. And you just wanna get a relatively even boil on the water surface just so that they look relatively even. You don't need to be scientific about it, just whatever sort of uh, looks close enough. And there's a pressure gauge in here and that will uh, give you a, a reading of the, of the pressure that's in there. They run very low, these types of systems, um, normally sort of you know, even less than five PSI, so they're not high pressure. What will happen is that if this uh, unit was to get blocked or if the, there was a, a problem in there with um, gunk or, or something gone wrong, the pressure will build up, but it will build up to a point where there's a pressure relief valve here that will release so it will protect the air pump. And I'll show you here, if you close it off completely, you'll start getting this noise there. So if ever you hear that, that's the pressure relief valve in operation it's telling you that something's wrong. Now on the flip side, if the pressure drops back to zero, 
what that means is that you've either got a hole in the uh, in the hose somewhere, which is very unlikely, but over time what it's more likely is that the seals in here need replacing. With all of these types of piston air pumps, they have a uh, piston cups and seals in there and they wear out over time. And what will happen is that the pump will keep working along as normal, but you won't be getting air coming out of the, uh, of the air stations in the dam itself. So when that happens, it's time to uh, get yourself a rebuild kit and just change the seals and the piston cups. Now, in terms of maintenance in here, what you can do when you've got two in, uh, air stations in here, you can um, shut one off completely and open one up completely so that that gives you more air going through one, just if there was any buildup of stuff in there, with, again, which is unlikely, but it will just give it a bit of a blast. Then shut the one that you um, open up fully off, open up the other one that was off, so you just switch it around so that all the air blasts through another one. You only need to do that every, I don't know, a few months. Um, there's an air filter in here that you can simply twist this cover off here and that will pull out. Actually with this one you need to turn it off first, remove the two plugs and then you access it in there like so. And so in there is your air filter and it's simple to, to pull in and out and it's a good idea to have a couple of these spare with you so that what you can do then is um, take one out, take it back to the shed or the house, give it a bit of a wash, you can rinse them under water, you can blast it out with a workshop compressor uh, and then just stick it in the cupboard and then come back a couple of months later and then give it another, um, swap it over and take the other one back and clean it so you can cycle through them. Um, it's hard to say how often you need to clean it. You've got here a sticker change, a filter every three months. As long as you clean it, you might get longer uh, life than that out of it. If it's a very dusty environment, then you might need to change them over and clean them every month if it's not so dusty every other month. But it's a good idea to regularly check your filters because that can save you a lot of um, preventative maintenance in terms of the, um, uh, the compressor rebuild kits because these things run hot and if you uh, reduce the airflow with dirty filters, they're gonna run hotter. So it means that you, it's gonna shorten the life in between those rebuilds. Uh, the rebuilds, the, the manufacturer's recommendation is every couple of years. In practice, people wait longer than that, but if you do wanna to stick to the recommendation, you'll change it out every couple of years. So now we can just put the 10. The reason why you've got two, fan, two um, uh, plugs in here is one is for the air pump itself and the other one is for a cooling exhaust fan. And the fan will also wear out over time. They'll last you a few years before you need to change it. But if you notice that there's no air coming out underneath, then it's time to change the cooling fan or just plug it in on its own and make sure that it's working okay. Uh, because you do want to have, the reason why you've got the cooling fan in is that it draws air from one side of the cabinet and exhausts the air the hot air out and um, drags cool air in. Uh, so that's about all you need to do on the inside of the cabinet. So we'll just flip that back on again and let's go have a look at what's in the dam. Okay, so now you can see in the dam what I was talking about, how this isn't balanced yet. You can see the one on the um, my left hand side uh, is cranking compared to the other one. So what we'll do is um, turn one down and then uh, we try and get them rebalanced. That's more of an even spread now. And here we have the finished project. Compressor humming away. Hose dug in the shallow trench. And then a couple of bubblers bubbling away. Tough to see in the rain. Getting bloody wet right now, I tell you. And that's how you install a Vertex aeration system. Easy peasy.